So the property market has done relatively well and has shown surprising resilience in recent years given that it's been struggling in the face of uh, significant political and economic headwinds. So it constantly surprised us on the upside. So what we've seen since then is that with the political leadership transition um, and the boom of confidence that followed the election of Cyril Ramaphosa as our new president, um, confidence levels soared, uh, the RAND strengthened and we had another interest rate cut and we started seeing the uh, housing market to show signs of recovery and by some measures it had bounced up quite um, significantly. What we're seeing right now is that uh, the optimism that happened directly after the political transition is starting to fade a little bit and I think that is realistic because I do feel that some of the optimism was a little overdone I think the extent of the adjustments that have to be made and the, if one could call it just the mess that was left by the end of last year, it's going to take quite a while to sort that out. Also the global environment is not as positive as it was um, earlier this year. We are seeing all the emerging markets come under pressure and that has resulted in the RAND weakening somewhat. So we are possibly looking at slightly higher inflation, no more interest rate cuts likely for the foreseeable future. In fact, the next move in interest rates is now likely to be upwards. And part of the cleanup after the um, political turmoil we've been through has been that government finances have had to be consolidated, which has involved raising tax rates. And so we are seeing households under a little bit of pressure, um, and particularly the increase in VAT. Um, so you are, as, as households come under pressure, you will have noticed that the mood in the housing market has deteriorated. The commentary has got a little bit more negative, but I do think it's very important to keep in mind that after years of battling against very weak economic growth and a lot of political uncertainty, we have had a seismic change. The outlook for the property market is a lot more positive than it's been in a very long time. And the rebound might not be as quick as we initially anticipated, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. If one looks at what drives a property market, there are two very important factors. The one is demographics and the other is affluence. In terms of demographics, it's the number of people there are who are coming into the property market and wanting to buy houses. And affluence is about the ability of those people to buy those houses. So it's about numbers and so it's, it's about the need and the, the willingness and the ability to, to purchase homes. South Africa is in a very fortunate position in that we have a large young population. And according to the last census, about two thirds of our entire population are currently under the age of 35. And if you consider that the typical age of a first time homeowner is 34, you can see that the bulk of South Africa is still going to age to the point where they start entering the labor market. So you've got millions and millions of people who are going to want to start buying houses. And that provides a really solid underpinning for the housing market. As new entrants come in, it then enables people to sell their homes and move up the property ladder. So in terms of, of demographics, we have a solid fundamental support for the South African market. Where we've battled previously has been in the area of affluence. It's people's ability to buy. And that's where your weak economy has been a, a major headwind for the, for the local economy. And that is now fortunately starting to turn around. Employment is obviously an issue, but with interest rates at relatively low levels and banks willing to lend money, we are starting to see first time buyers in a position to start buying houses. Um, in fact, Uber's latest figures for May of this year show that just over half of all mortgages extended in May went to first time buyers. So we're starting, as the economy starts to strengthen and they, they've already doubled, analysts have already doubled the growth forecast for 2018. Um, as the economy continues to strengthen, so your first time homeowners are in a better position and are able to enter the market. So both numbers and affluence Demographics and affluence are now starting to move in our favour, which is a, a strong positive for, for the local property market. One of the other key changes that we're anticipating at the moment is that if you look in recent years, in fact since 2013, the Western Cape property market has significantly outperformed the national average. It's been growing by double digit figures in terms of profit price growth compared to low single digits for the economy, for the, for the national housing market overall. And one of the key reasons for that has been the semigration trend, and that very much accelerated from 
2013 onwards. And that saw older, more affluent South Africans moving to the coast, all along the South African coastline, but particularly the Western Cape coastline. And that played a crucial role in elevating the um, the Western Cape housing market, particularly because much of the Western Cape is limited in terms of where houses can be built by the coastline and by the various mountain ranges. So it has a tendency to be an expensive market. So the Western Cape has dominated very much in recent years. But what we're seeing now is that after several years of really strong growth in prices, we, we have reached a level where it's out of kilter with the economic realities and buyers are resisting those price levels. And you're starting to see the very expensive traditional hotspots in the Western Cape or the Cape Metro market starting to cool. It's being led by the Atlantic seaboard with the City Bowl and the southern suburbs not far behind. So you're starting to see price realism set in and it's actually a very healthy thing. The impact of the drought last year wasn't as bad as we anticipated. Undoubtedly it played a role. If you've got very expensive property and you have the risk of day zero, you can imagine as a potential buyer you would probably sort of rethink your any prospect of moving to the Western Cape. But it wasn't as bad as expected and as the winter rains continue to surprise on the upside, it looks like we'll avoid a similar situation happening next year. But what we are seeing is as the very expensive regions start cooling, a bit of price realism enters them, people are looking further afield. They're saying your traditional Cape Town properties or suburbs are very expensive, there's a lot of congestion, it might be time to look a little further afield. So you're seeing areas like the northern suburbs, the western seaboard, the south peninsula, those markets are starting to experience a pickup in, in activity as buyers look in areas that they might not have, have considered before um, in terms of, of purchasing their property. Gauteng is, has, because they lost all those people who were moving to the Western Cape, they, um, the Gauteng market has tended to lag behind the, the national um, market. But now that the economy is starting to turn up, one must keep in mind that Gauteng remains the economic powerhouse of the economy, of the South African economy. And their housing market, the houses are more affordable, um, the market's in better balance, um, it's buyers and sellers, their properties are staying on the market for a far shorter time, um, and now it seems to be very well positioned um, to enjoy an, up an uptick um, as the economy starts to gather momentum. The other area in which Gauteng benefits is that over the last decade, half of all first-time buyers purchase their property in Gauteng as they gain their first hold, foothold on the, on the property ladder. Partly that's because those properties are more affordable, but it's also because the economic opportunities in our economic heartland are more, more plentiful. So, as we've mentioned earlier, the um, first-time homeowners are starting to show signs of recovery, and that's generally because they are far more sensitive to economic, the economic times, because they haven't had an extensive career to, to build up capital, so they're very reliant on, on bank lending. So when conditions are more conducive, as they are becoming now, and, and financial institutions are eager to extend bonds because it's, it's lucrative for them, the first time home buyer is the first to, to be, feel the benefit of those, that, and Gauteng is best placed to feel the increase in demand from, from home knowers. So we are anticipating that Gauteng is on the brink of quite a nice recovery in activity and prices, and we may start seeing a relative shift away from the Western Cape, which has dominated in recent years, towards, towards Gauteng. And the last major province is KwaZulu-Natal, and we're seeing a number of benefits there. The first is that some of this immigration, as Cape Town became more expensive, people were starting to look at the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal. There's a lot of development happening there, the moving of the International Airport, the King Shaka International Airport, up to the north coast means that it was easy for the main breadwinner to, to um, commute to and from Johannesburg and could, they could keep, uh, locate their families within an estate in KwaZulu-Natal. KwaZulu-Natal has the advantage, Cape Town is very, con uh, very concentrated with the CBD, whereas KwaZulu-Natal tends to be more evenly spread, there's less congestion, there is more room for estates. And the other thing that KwaZulu-Natal has been quite successful in doing is that they are positioning themselves as the retirement capital or the retirement hub of South Africa. Um, they're trying to, the, the analogy is being made to Florida in America, and Tongard Hewlett has been quite successful in, a, in, in doing quite a lot of research into the retirement market. 
They've realized that the number of retirees in South Africa is growing quite quickly as that section of the population grows. And they no longer want to live in nursing homes or the traditional old age home. They would far prefer to live in um, within a, an established estate. So you're starting to see estates develop um, retirement communities. So they want a more active lifestyle. They want all the amenities that a traditional housing estate offers but with, an addition, with the addition of medical care. So the weather, the right sort of housing units are all being established in the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal and that is contributing to the pickup pick up in activity we're seeing in that province.